G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now I've had a lot of people nagging me, well, inquiring about when I'm going to get around to looking at this DAL or DL220, this uh, mini quad by DAL. I've looked at the DL180 and I'm just about to put the review of that up and suffice to say I'm really happy with that little quad. It's a brilliant little 180 sized mini quad. This is a 220 sized, so I wanted to look at the differences. There you go. It doesn't come like this, I've just loosely put it together because this is a first look at the DL220. Some of the stuff I like, some of the stuff I don't like. So uh, let's start with the bad stuff. Now I hope most of you will have watched my video on stress risers and why I thought the design of the ZMR250 arms was crap because I want to show you what they've done here. Look, now here's an arm. Look here, we have a very narrow passage, a very narrow piece of carbon there and a very narrow piece there. We also have a hole here. Now these things are stress risers. That means that if you land on a motor, if you do a cartwheel or something like that, it's very, very likely this arm is just going to break through there. It's going to break through there. Now on a ZMR250, that's not too much of a worry because you can buy spare arms. But if I pull out of this, you'll be able to see that you can't buy spare arms for the 220 because it's an all one piece base. So that's a little bit more of a worry. And because this is bigger than the 180 that I was looking at before, see it's quite a bit bigger, there's quite a bit of difference in size, then the stress, the actual magnitude of the forces on the ends of these arms is going to be greatly increased over a 180 size quad. So uh, I have to say I'm just not that happy about the fact that these ends here are going to be prone to breaking. Now, okay, maybe it won't happen. This is pretty good quality carbon and it's pretty thick as you can see. We're looking at, um, I didn't caliper it. Let's caliper it now and see what it is. I think it's three millimeter, three millimeter carbon. Put my calipers on and I will tell you. Oh no, it's not actually. Let's have a look. 3.3, 3.3 millimeter carbon. That's an unusual size. Just check I've calibrated these. Yes, 3.3 millimeter carbon. So that's like eighth of an inch, just over eighth of an inch in the old money. So it is a bit thicker than three mil. That'll help. But still, I would like to have seen those motor mounts or the a little bit more space around here. Now they do come with those little red mounts that I like so much because these act as feet as well as giving you motor protection. So that compensates in a small way for the lack of. Um, you know, area on this motor mount. But again, since these are also feet, I'll show you on the 180. Here's the 180. You see these motor protection pads also act as feet. And what the hell is this hole for? Who designed this? Why did they put a hole there? There's no, serves no purpose on earth, that hole, except to concentrate the stress either side and make that a potentially weak point. Okay. And um, I don't know why they chose that option, but they did. And it's the same. It is the same on the 180. As you can see, it's, it has the hole too. But as I say, this is a smaller quad, so the stresses are going to be less than on this one. Because I'm going to show you something else that one of the things I like about this quad, which also makes those weak arms even more of an issue, and that is the fact that it will take quite a big battery. Now, most of these mini quads, like the little 180s, you're going to be using a 1,000, 1,100, or a 1,300 milliamp battery pack, uh, which really means you're limited in your flight times. With those little 4 inch props, you don't get a lot of flight time out of these 180 size mini quads. This being a 220, you want to put a bigger battery on it, get better flight times. And you can actually put a 1.8 on there. This is a 1.84 cell. Look at that. That fits very nicely on the frame. You'll get your battery straps around there. So this could be a really good combo. Uh, you'll have a lot of power, high C battery. Uh, this is a 65 C. So 65 times 1.8, that's you know nearly, nearly 120 amps or something. That's a lot of power you can draw out of this battery. So it won't sag. It'll be a heavier combo, of course. And that's why the strength of the arms becomes important, because if you crash with a 1.8 battery on board, ping, snap, bang, there goes your entire frame, because you'd have to buy a new kit just to get the base plate. I haven't seen the, the bottom plates advertised separately. Okay, so hmm, there you go. Now another thing looking at it, it is quite unusual in its design, because it has these side panels here. Now you see it's sort of boxed in. Now boxes are, or, you know, box sections are very stiff, very rigid. That's wonderful. Uh, I have seen problems in the past, though, with quads that have sides because effectively when you are yawing it can block the airflow to the propeller so if you if you were to yaw this way then obviously you're going sideways through the air this propeller is getting disturbed airflow you can actually get an un, unwanted banking as a part of your yawing or going sideways so yeah we'll see how that handles when I finish put it together but uh, as I say it does provide a lot of protection for your flight controller your receiver your FPV gear so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out in practice how that compares to theory now the other thing I'm not too chuffed about at all is the camera mount. 
It has the facility for a board camera, and as you can see, it has the uh, it ends up with lots of angle on it. The angle of that actual camera plate is really, really quite high. So if you're going racing, that's fine. Um, but if you want to do proximity, well, I don't think you're going to do much proximity with a camera on that angle. I don't have my camera quite so much angle. It's almost 45 degrees. It's probably 35 degrees. So if you're looking at it coming into land, you're not going to be able to see the ground. And if you're racing, as I say, it doesn't matter too much because you're really going to be flying at a, an extreme angle anyway. But it does, makes it less than a general purpose quad. It's more of a flat out racing quad than a quad you might you know, be interested in doing uh, proximity, just general tooling around, maybe even aerobatics because you know, your camera angle is so very, very skewed. Another thing I found, let me just take some of this apart here. Um, also, um, you can see there's no provision to adjust that camera angle. It's simply a slot top and bottom, and you've got to use those slots. Also note the slot is milled vertically, but the, the board goes into it on an angle. So, you know, it's a bit kludgy from an engineering perspective. But one of the things I noticed is to get the actual board camera to fit in there and not foul on the bottom, you have to bring the plate, this mounting plate, right up against the circuit board. So you'd have to basically put some bolts through the corners there and make sure it doesn't squash any components on the board or put some spaces in, a lot of farting around. And the one thing that really is quite annoying is this camera will work okay because there's very few components on the face of that camera on the front of the circuit board there. But this one, which is also a 600 TV line, has the crystal on the front. And I, I tried, if I put the board on here, like so, you can see that the crystal stops the board from getting low enough so it won't actually fit in the frame anymore because the cameras the board is too far back and because we're on an angle it fouls the bottom of the frame so you can't just use any old board camera in this frame because if it has any components on the front it just won't fit won't fit against the frame properly so it's a bit of a downer it's a bit of a bummer if you've already got a few board cameras and they're not the right type so it's worth making sure you do use the right type and the one that you've got isn't the type that has a crystal on the front or any other large components on the front. I thought, well, uh, maybe I'll use my favourite camera, the HS1177, which has a, a little bracket, but unfortunately underneath, you've got these great big gaping holes, so there's no easy way to just mount that because, <laughs> you know, there's holes there. You can't put any screws through. They're too big. So you'd probably have to move it back or make a plate up or drill some holes there. So, uh, you know, given how popular the HS1177 camera is, I would have thought, you know, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll give you a decent way to, to mount that. But having said that, if you've got an HS117M, look, comes with the ring mount. So you can hang your HS117 from the top of this plate, I suppose it is, and problem solved. So that's, a, you know, uh, the board camera thing, you're probably not going to use a board camera. Throw that away. Throw that away. You know, old school, old school board camera. What you're going to do is you're going to open this lovely plastic bag. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Plastic ripped. Can I try and open this, rip the top off this, <clears throat> man where's my scissors, where's a knife, here's a knife, the zip bag is never going back together folks, look, I had to cut the top of it, um, yeah get the, the ring mount, which is always at the bottom of the bag like so, and then the little platform that it screws into, which is here, let's just make sure this works, because I sometimes I get a little bit, I worry a bit about these, is that going to fit in there, I don't actually, this is interesting. I don't think, that, is that too wide? It may be too wide. Let's have a look. You might have to do some fettling. Yep, it's <laughs> just, it just, well no it doesn't. It doesn't fit, right? So it's too wide. It's not going to go in there. And does it go into the top plate? Is it supposed to drop through? Probably is. I don't know why that they, this new technique that they're using with the DL stuff is to mount the, the mount to the Mobius. No, look, it doesn't go on there either. Does it? Can't tell. I'll look into it further, but it's, oh yeah, it's got a couple of holes there. There you go, so I'm, all, I'm talking rubbish here. And that must go on here like that, and it drops through. Okay, fair enough. So that's going to work, but this piece, get rid of it. I'm not going to use it. So yeah, my concerns about the camera mount probably a little bit unfounded. But you won't be using a board camera, I wouldn't think. You're probably going to go for your HS1177M, which I'm reviewing in a separate video. Um, I'll check out and see whether you can use the standard HS117 in there as well, or maybe even a board camera may fit with that ring mount. But there you go. So I've basically dismissed my own concerns. It's wonderful. As you can tell, it's not long out of the box, this thing. <laughs> so there you go. Now, as I say, everything is nicely um, 
protected inside that box. We don't know what it's going to do to the flight characteristics. We've got plenty of places to put our aerials if you want to mount a bulkhead directly on the frame. I don't recommend putting an SMA connector on there and having your aerial come out because they just break off. When you have a smash, they just break the top of the SMA connector at the top of the SMA connector. So I'd probably run mine out here and use a right angle, but yes, that would work. I'd probably put my SMA connector on the back and a right angle antenna up like that so that when you hit something, it just bends back doesn't break stuff off there you go so that's a quick look out of the box at the dl220 has its good points has its bad points so far i'm you know i'm pretty impressed i must say i'm pretty impressed the stress rises the design of these arms aside which the test of time and my uh, crappy flying will test to see whether they're going to be an issue and i think yeah oh, i'm quite looking forward to getting this going because it will take five inch props which is a bonus there you go there's a five inch prop and if we put that on the motor center, you can see it will clear the frame. So five inch props, because as I say, the, the real problem I've encountered, I think most people have encountered with these things, the little ones, is that the battery is just, you just, if you're going to hammer it, you just don't get the flight times. There's just not enough energy in that little battery with these inefficient props to give you a reasonable flight time and good performance. So going to the five inch props, you're going to get better flight times, more pop, more zing. And really, this is not that much bigger, so we'll... The what 220 become my new favorite little mini quad? I don't know. Stick around and you'll find out when I do because I should have this going together in the next few days. And I, what I'll do is I'll do a video comparing the two, the DL180 with the DL220. And we'll see which handles better, which has the best turn of speed, and which is the most flexible in terms of your various options. So there you go. If you've got questions, comments, stick them in the usual place provided by YouTube. I'll do my best to address them. And in the meantime, thank you for watching. It's time for me to get back to the bench. I'll spot you later. Bye for now.